Hi friends, uh, welcome to Christ Space Healing. This is my channel and it is brand new. This is the very first video that I'm creating and I'm nervous, but I'm also very excited. Um, I wanted to create this channel just to help with um, the body of Christ. I was hoping that I could edify everyone through different content that has to do with physical, mental, and spiritual health. I am a health and nutrition counselor by trade and I have um, a background in mental health and addictions research. So I thought that I could create a channel just to help um, my brothers and sisters as we're going through this very crazy time in 2021. Um, I, I just really feel called to be a part of the help. I don't particularly like doing videos. This is something that um, God put on my heart. I am also a new born again Christian. So a lot of this stuff is new for me. I don't um, profess to be a, a prophet or a theologian or a preacher or a teacher, anything like that. Um, I'm still a baby in Christ. I'm just somebody who's so, so grateful that uh, the Lord found me and gave me grace. And I just want to help build everyone up in the same way that many um, different channels and people have built me up over the years and helped me come to Christ. I just wanted to be a part of that um, beautiful melody, if you will, of um, the body of Christ and to help those people who are seeking truth um, in the way that I was throughout my life uh, to find it and, and to find salvation. So welcome. Um, today I just wanted to talk about fear versus strength. Um, as I had said earlier, I don't particularly feel great about coming on um, video, but it is through God's word um, and through his strength that I've been able to do that. Um, there's one well, there's many passages, but specifically the passage from Isaiah 41.10, where God says, I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And this verse really gives me a lot of comfort in knowing that as I'm doing work, for God and as long as I'm following his will and following his commands um, that he is there with me um, through the Holy Spirit and he's able to keep me safe and protect me so that's definitely where the strength is coming from to create this channel um, and and also um, 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and of love and of self-control and that one means a lot uh, to me because that is something that has been um, my battle for a long time I guess all of ours right is just denying the flesh <laughs> um, and say no to all of the things that our bodies want and that our deceitfully wicked hearts want and what our mind wants um, and, and that's a bit of a journey and one that I'm still on. Um, but God continues to provide me grace and ample opportunity <laughs> to change, which is incredible. Um, yeah, so I've got a couple different things that I wanted to talk about. Um, one of the main things that I've Really realized over the last two years um, since the whole pandemic happened um, in 2020 is how important it is to pay attention to what I let into my life I I think I did a pretty decent job for some things because I'm pretty um, sensitive in many respects so I didn't really um, okay I wouldn't really watch um, horror movies or things that brought visuals into my mind because I knew that um, I couldn't get them out once they were in there and I just didn't want those things coming into into my dreams or creating new new fears as I said earlier I have um, enough fears as it is <laughs> so I don't need to add more um, by watching things that are scary um, and I really am just somebody who likes kind of peace and tranquility I don't 
like drama. Um, I don't like um, arguments or, or anything like that. Violence, stuff like that's not my thing. Um, I'm not sure how it could be anyone's thing, but I guess it is. Um, but yeah, so I've really, you know, realized how important it is to pay attention to the things that I'm watching, watching, sorry, and the things that I'm listening to, um, whether it be like podcasts or other people's thoughts or music. Um, and then also just who I'm spending my time with. I, um, as a, as a born again Christian coming to realize, um, the truth of the world and, and that there is a God and that um, he is coming back and he's coming back to judge, um, but also that he has all these wonderful promises for those people who um, who, who worship him and who um, repent of their sins and turn away uh, from the ways of the world so that we can follow his ways, that he has some amazing promises and there's like a whole other world and like I'm learning about the millennial kingdom, which is super exciting because it sounds like everything that I've been hoping for and praying for um, my whole life. So um, that's really exciting. And, um, and, and just knowing who, who Jesus is and how he, um, how he approaches people and how gracious he is uh, to those of us who can humble ourselves and to those of us who really sincerely um, want God in our life and, and want to do his will instead of ours. He works with us in such in incredible ways. I'm always just blown away of how gentle he is with me and and how, how loving he is, but, but also how much he can convict me to um, recognize when I'm doing wrong and then can help me um, see that there's a way out. Um, what's that passage? There's one, um, I can't remember. It, it has to do with, um, hmm. um, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Um, I know that the King James Version is what I would consider the best version, the most accurate version. Um, but I do like the new international version, especially for people who are brand new to the Bible, maybe didn't grow up um, in a Christian home, because the King James Version can be pretty hard to understand. And um, there's not a ton of churches that I would recommend people go to because um, in my experience, at least here in Canada, most of them are, are false, um, false prophets and fake Christians and they're not biblical Christians. Um, so I, and even if you did find a good church, it's important that you read God's word for yourself. So what I would recommend is that you have both, that you have the um, new international version so that you can read through it and really get a, an idea of what the scriptures say and what the stories are within the Bible um, that uh, and the instructions that God's giving you and then you can compare that to the King James Version so you know an example would be if I'm looking for um, um, maybe I'm struggling with something and I'm looking in the Bible to see what God says about it um, I'll usually first look in the New International Version so I can um, understand on a more modern way um, what it's saying and then I will open up the King James Version afterwards and just make sure that I really am um, not misinterpreting the words or taking the um, verse out of context which is really easy to do it. I've noticed a lot of people will just um, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like just spit out a, a sentence like a lot of um, non-Christians will say things like, oh, Jesus said um, you're not supposed to judge, and they'll just take one tiny little piece out of the Bible and they, they don't look at the story, they don't look at the context, they don't look at what's said before and what's said afterwards, and that's really dangerous. So whenever you're hearing even me um, bringing out a, just a specific verse, I really encourage you to always go to God's word and read for yourself because I'm human and I make mistakes and nobody's perfect. So whomever you're following, 
um, and I follow a lot of people and I'll, I'll share those with you as, uh, as I go along um, because I find that they're able to really um, help me in a lot of ways and, and, and edify me is uh, a word, new word that I'm learning, all the different Christian words, but I do get a lot of um, uh, edification from um, my Christian brothers and sisters who are doing videos and so that's really important but we don't want to rely on another human to provide us with all of our information that's very dangerous um, because as humans we are all at fault and there's actually this verse in Jeremiah 17 uh, sorry chapter 17 verse 9 and 10 the heart is deceitfully Sorry, <laughs> the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. And so there's a couple of things here. One is that God is telling us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And this is very, very true. It's true for me and it's true for everyone. Um, we make justifications for our thoughts and our behaviors all the time. Um, and it's so strategic sometimes, uh, our brains, and it's subconscious, where that our brains truly believe in the justification that we're giving. Um, even though it goes against God's word. So it's it's really easy for us as humans to take God's word and put a little twist on it. And that's what Satan is especially good at, I've learned over the years, <laughs> is that um, Satan takes a truth and just gives it a little bit of a spin. Um, and so it's false, but there's truth in it. And so it's really hard to pick up on um, truth in this world in 2021 because everyone is just spinning things with a with a bit of a narrative and it sounds good and tickles the ears and um, and makes us feel good because it allows us to stay in our sin um, and, and so i'm going to say that again because i think it's really important is that if you are believing something or happy to hear something because it makes you feel good I would dig in a little bit deeper because there's probably a really good chance that your heart has deceived you, um, that you are listening to something that tickles your ears and, and helps you feel like, oh no, okay, I don't have to change, I don't have to make adjustments, I wasn't wrong, um, any of those things, um, I'm going to I'm going to really encourage you to spend a little bit more time in God's Word, specifically always number one, we want to go back to the source and we want to read God's Word for ourselves. Um, the second thing we want to do is spend a lot of time in prayer. One of the most beautiful things I ever heard somebody explain was um, prayer is your ability to talk to God and reading the Bible is God's way of talking to you. And so there's this wonderful um, give and take. and the reading of God's Word is so very important because you could end up like I was for most of my life and up until just a few years ago um, I was going to hell and I thought that I wasn't but I didn't understand um, that I, I, <laughs> I didn't understand that I had to read God's Word to really understand um, truth rather than just relying on other people I would always you know, hear other people tell me what God had said, and then I would I would think to myself, okay, well, because I didn't grow up in a, in a Christian home or, or any religion. I grew up in a secular kind of atheistic home, and so I had to kind of learn everything for myself. Um, sorry, I'm going a bit off topic, but my main point really is just to always bring it back to God. Um, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way to death there is a way that seems right to man we think it's right because our brain has convinced us that somehow we know better than a holy righteous 
um, eternal God, where we'll say things like, oh, well, you know, that was 2,000 years ago that Jesus wrote that. The times have changed. Everything's different. Well, no, because God also tells us that he doesn't change. Um, and like he says, I, the Lord, your God, do not change. And so what he said 2,000 years ago, what he said 4,000 years ago, no matter when he said it, he doesn't change his mind. And that is comforting, should be comforting, um, to those of us who walk the narrow path and, and try to follow his commands the best that we can and, and are constantly repenting when we fall short of his glory. Um, that's really comforting for me to know that God doesn't change because that means his promises remain eternal forever and that's beautiful. But the tickling of the ears and the deceitfulness of the heart will tell us, you know, oh, that that was just back then. God will understand and, um, you know, if if God really loves me, he'll accept me for who I am. That's like a big one uh, that, that people get wrong, really wrong. I'll talk about that on a different day. Um, there's many reasons why, you know, there is a way that seems right to a man. There's many reasons why um, we trick ourselves into believing that something is right, mostly because we just want to stay in our sin, whatever that may be. Um, but its end is the way to death. Yes? We don't want that. We don't want to be um, on the way to death. <laughs> uh, at least I don't. Definitely not. So um, definitely keeping in mind um, that the, our hearts really cannot be trusted. And it's completely opposite to the narrative of what we hear out in the world where they're like, you know, it's, it's how you feel that is most important or it's your truth. And um, it, it really is just... Um, an excuse for you to do the things that you desire, to do the things that make you happy, to do the things that you want to do. Um, it's an excuse, really, and it's a rationalization to do behaviors that are ungodly and that God does not want us to do. And so if you are a Christian, um, if you are and you want to be a born-again Christian, or you know, you've heard about the love of Jesus Christ and you want to know how to follow him, it requires you to change. It requires you to be different. And that's not an easy pill to swallow because the world is telling you that you're fine just the way you are, while at the same time telling you to be different. That's again, a whole other <laughs> video. Um, the world's upside down and they say a lot of things that tickle our ears and sound good, but they don't actually practice them in the world because look at how many people are not who they are. People who go through plastic surgery, people who change um, their bodies in many different ways. Um, the fact that we like color our hair and the fact that we put on makeup and we, you know, um, wear certain clothes and we do these things to slightly change and adjust how we look um, because we don't accept ourselves as God made us. We don't feel good enough because we're basing our um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like we're basing our worth on what the, what other people think of us, which we shouldn't do. We should only be worried about what God thinks of us because people in the world are crazy. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my, um, analysis of the world today. Having come to terms with what really is happening, that we are in the end times, that um, things are, are speeding up, that Jesus's return um, is going to happen in my lifetime, which is super exciting, um, but a little panicky because now, you know, I'm trying to explain to people what I'm learning, um, but it's falling on deaf ears with most of the people I know. It's a bit um, soul crushing, to be honest. It's, I'm not a very good evangelist, let's just say that. <laughs> But I figured if um, I made this channel and, uh, you know, I, a couple times a week I just um, post where I'm at and, and what I'm learning and um, the different parts of the Bible that speak to me, that that might help even just one person. And, um, you know, in, in the Bible it talks about um, that there is more celebration in heaven for when one sinner repents um, than all of the righteous acts of a righteous person, something along those lines. And um, 
and I love that. So it'd be great if, uh, if this channel helped bring one person to the kingdom of God and, um, to salvation, that would make me super happy. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit. I think I'd veered off earlier of, of the warning today. Um, one is, um, stepping out of fear. Um, right. God tells us that he will strengthen us. Um, he tells us that what, what's the verse it says, um, it is in our weakness that like God's strength is revealed something along those lines. And I think that's so beautiful. And then there's also the verse that, um, that says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we get so much strength from God, which is such a relief because I'm not super strong on my own. Um, but that's okay. Cause you know, God says that his strength is made perfect in my weakness and that's just incredible. So I can be weak and he can be strong for me, which is amazing. Um, but, um, I wanted to give a warning today, um, of, of that we should not keep bad company. So I'd mentioned earlier about um, being careful of the things that we watch and the things that we listen to and, and the music, but we should also be very careful about the people that we spend time with um, because they do influence us. And, um, you know, there's a really great video by uh, Off the Curb Ministries and um, where he, he shows this visual of us um, as Christians thinking like we're all in white and those people, he's got like this visual of this other person with like a slimy shirt. And, um, you know, we're going over there and we're hugging them and we're trying to um, bring them to Christ. And we think that we're providing cleansing for them. But really, uh, when he takes a step back, he's got all the slime on him. <laughs> and it's just, I think, a great visual of how if we spend too much time with people who aren't also... Um, Bible believing Christians that it's easy for us to get sucked back into the world and we don't want to do that. And oops, sorry. And there are um, a couple of verses that I wanted to read for you and that you can go in and um, open up your Bibles and maybe spend a little bit of time with these verses. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And this is very, very true. <laughs> um, you know, if we're in a group, and I see this happening all the time, if we're in a group with like, say, six other people, and those six people all have like a group think, it would all agree with the same thing, and you're saying something different, it's very easy for you to just go along to get along. Um, because you don't want to ruffle the feathers. And so then they can lead you to do something that you know that you shouldn't be doing, right? Like as a teenager and you're with a, a group of people and they're all smoking and they're like, come on, just have one, just try one. And eventually you just can't withstand the, the attack of constantly saying no and constantly being asked that you're just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have a cigarette. And the next thing you know, you're smoking. And that would have been avoided if you weren't hanging around those people. Um, another example is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 says, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Mm -hmm. So another warning. So those who walk with wise men will be wise and wise, you know, God tells us that, um, you know, faith in him is the beginning of wisdom. And so wise people are fellow believers and fellow believers in the one true living God, the God of Abraham, um, Jacob and Isaac, right? So the God of the Bible, that is, those are the people you want to be spending time, your most time with because um, they're the ones who are going to be able to give you good counsel and are going to be able to um, speak to you on a level of, of um, godliness that unbelievers just can't do. Um, because the warning says the companion of fools will suffer harm. And this is very true. Harm from maybe making decisions um, that you wouldn't have made without those people's input in the previous example. Um, perhaps it's that you're spending time with unbelievers and they actually have um, like demonic spirits that are influencing them. And so they're going to do maybe physical, physical harm or verbal harm or spiritual harm. Um, 
perhaps you're spending time with unbelievers and because they seem really genuine, um, but those people have antisocial personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder, and they're just really charismatic and charming, those people will cause a lot of havoc in your house. Uh, sorry, in your house, but yeah, also in your life. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree with that, and I think it's very eye-opening. Um, this one, Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. This is an incredible, credible verse. Um, and I, I really just recommend that we all spend a little bit of time listening to what God is telling us not to do and telling us what to do. So really he's saying, um, do not walk in the counsel of wicked. So again, what I said earlier, unbelievers do not ask them for their advice, especially not on anything that has to do with... Um, well, really anything. Like, I, I really wouldn't spend time asking them what they think you should do um, because they will likely veer you the wrong way. It also says not to stand in the path of sinners. So sometimes we can spend a lot of our time, if any of you are like me, um, who grew up surrounded by um, people who do have personality disorders like borderline, narcissism, antisocial. Um, these are cluster B personality disorders and they are very toxic. Um, and they cause a lot of anguish and pain for people who are very empathetic um, and people who are believers because it's very easy for us to be um, taken advantage of and they do do that. Um, so sometimes we, you know, stand in the path. It's sometimes we try and stop um, these types of people from doing bad things, but God is telling us not to stand in that path, which I find very interesting and contrary to the way I've behaved for most of my life. But if God's telling me to, to step aside and let them have their free will and let them do the things that are destructive, you know, I give my warning and I let them know that it's not a good thing, but I'm not supposed to stop them. So that's interesting. It also says, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. So yes, right? If we're sitting, if we're hanging around with people and they're the type of people who are standing on the corner um, mocking other people or yelling out verbal abuses and, and scoffing, just being like gossiping, saying mean things about other people, um, that's not okay. We're not supposed to be in those environments. And then he tells us what we are supposed to do. And we're supposed to delight in the law of the Lord, right? Especially the Ten Commandments. It's called the, no the moral law, which is what we are all judged on at the end of time. If you aren't sure what the moral law is, you can go to Exodus. Um, and it's the Ten Commandments. And I would recommend that everybody listen to that. Oh, um, I'll link um, to on my website, Christ Based Healing. I've got a bunch of resources. And one of the things I do is Bible readings. So I actually um, have a Bible reading for the moral law. I'll link it below. So you can just click on it and, and you can go to the site and you'll be able to read it um, and hear it um, at the same time. And he, in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season and its leaves do not wither. And in whatever it does, he prospers. So God is telling us that if we follow his law, follow his commands, spend time in, in meditation of who God is and what he wants us to do, that we will be strong, we'll be like a tree planted firmly, right? By streams of water, constantly we're going to be getting life from God, from his word, uh, just like if we were a tree beside a stream. Um, and our fruit is um, always going to be in season. Our leaves will not wither. And whatever we do, we will prosper. And that just sounds like such an amazing promise. Um, so I've got two more that I just wanted to touch on. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 15 say, do not be bound together with unbelievers. That's 
you know, for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness, or what harmony has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? And these are all really great points, right? As um, there is nothing wrong, and we are encouraged, from what I understand from what I'm reading, to go out into the world and to um, share the gospel with people, teach people um, what the Bible says, direct them to his word, and hopefully um, God can take the seeds we plant and he can water them and he can make them grow. But there's a difference between going out into the world and trying to help people and share the wisdom of God with them and kind of yoking together with them, getting married to unbelievers, um, having um, friendships with unbelievers, spending too much time with family members who are unbelievers, because we're operating on very different, um, what do I want to say, like, just, we're operating very differently. But what we're looking at for our compass and for our um, ways of life is coming from the Word of God, and what these people are doing is perhaps making their own rules, listening to other people, different gurus, and it's it's interesting because we live in a world, at least I did growing up, that always said, you know, don't talk about religion or politics because that can create conflict, when now I see why it's so important for us to do that. <laughs> because, you know, knowing what somebody's uh, religious beliefs are is important because you need to understand where their morality comes from and I mean somebody who is atheist and doesn't really have any moral stance um, what well by anything um, written by God they, then you'd have to ask them like well where do your morals come from and what do you, like where where does your source come from um, because it's a lot easier for an unbeliever to do something hurtful than somebody who is a believer and, and recognizes that God is watching them, that God is going to judge them. Um, yeah, it's like a, it's just a different way of living. <laughs> so be mindful of that, um, that really spending most of your time with believers and not that much with unbelievers. So, I mean, I've been talking for about 30 minutes. I don't know... Um, really what's a great length, but I feel like 30 minutes is enough time. And um, I'll be back again with a whole new topic. If there's anything that you um, would like to talk about, just make a comment and um, happy to help. Okay. Have a great day. Bye guys.